There's a last column right here. We haven't seen this. But this last column, what we want to do is we want to just say what type is yeah, it. Yeah, it's an acid or base or neutral. Well, I'm just going to look at the pH. That's probably the easiest way. pH I, less than 7, acid. Yeah. pH greater than 7, base. Yeah, 0 to 7 is an acid. 7 to 14, that's 14, not 111, is a base. And so this is an acid. Yep. Now, one thing we should say about these equations, don't get bogged down with how many of them that there are or what they all mean. Just look for an equation that gives you what you know and what you're looking for yeah. in that equation. And then just plug the one that you know in, and you will uh, find what you're looking for by putting it in that equation. It's that all simple. Right. Let's do this one right here, where we've got okay. 4.8 times 10 to the minus third. So I've got a, was it hydrogen or hydroxide? Hydroxide. Sorry. You sure? Yep, positive. Okay. So the concentration of the hydroxide was 4.8 times 10 to the negative third. 8 times 10 to the minus third. So what equation am I going to use to get something else? Um, well, well, if we, we have... do this one. We haven't done this one yet. Okay, that works. This one's a little bit weird, in that, but that's okay. So this is my equation right here. So I'll recopy it. The hydrogen times the hydroxide is 4.8. Nope. No, is uh, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Always and forever. It, it will that's, always that's, equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14 when you multiply them together. At 25 degrees Celsius. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, this hydroxide concentration is this number. So that's like, well, then H positive becomes X. So mm -hmm. it's like hydrogen times 4.8 times 10 to the minus third equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, how algebraically you solve that problem, Mr. Sims? Um, just divide both sides by 4.8 times 10 to the negative 3. 4.8 times 10 to the minus third then cancels here. 4.8 times 10 to the minus third. On the calculator, here I'll clear it here. I'll say 1 e negative 14 divided by 4.8 e negative 3. And kada bing, kada boom, I get the answer uh, of 2.08 times 10 to the minus 12. Now what's that giving me? That gives you hydrogen the ion hydrogen concentration. The hydrogen ion concentration. And that number then can put in this table as 2.08 times 10 to the minus 12th. Right. Now to get the pH and the pOH, just take negative log. Take so the negative log. So let's let's find the pOH now. Okay. So the pOH, something we haven't done yet, that's the negative log of well the hydroxide, hydroxide ion concentration. And we knew the hydroxide concentration was this 4.8 number, right? So I'm going to take the negative log of 4.8 times 10 to the minus third. So calculator negative log. 4.8 double E negative 3. About 2 point something, yeah. This is 2.32. That's the pOH. Remember, no units on right. pOH. So I'll put this in the calc or in the table. 2. No, nope, wrong spot. 2.32. Yeah, Mr. Sam's. I'm just writing in the next box, and I got to look at <laughs> what my columns mean. Now, this one I probably don't even need to do anything because pH plus two, pOH is uh, 14, so I can just take 14 minus 2.32, and that's going to give me 11.68. So I didn't even need to go back to the other screen. Now, is it an acid or a base? Look at pH. pH Always, greater than seven. It's yeah, a base. This is a base. All right, this next one's kind of interesting here because I just have a pH of six. Now I can do something real fast, Mr. Sam. Yep. Uh, six and eight is fourteen. Yep, that's eight. Uh, okay. This is six, so that mm -hmm. makes it a uh, acid. acid. Bam! I'm You're fast. I know uh, the hydrogen concentration. I do too. One times seven times six. I win. Yeah, I know. So on this one, we almost don't need to go to ten to the negative pH. All right? If you go back to this uh, screen here, if you want to find the H, ten to the negative pH, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I say ten to the negative six, I mean you put that in your calculator. Another way to do this, but I'll show you another way here, because that might help you. If I say 10, and I use the caret button, and I type in negative 6, it says 1e negative 6. That's right. the same thing as 10 to the minus 6, guys. Right. So this is 1 times 10 to the minus 6. And this will be uh, 10 to the negative 8. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 8. So we didn't even need a calculator. No, for whenever that. you have whole number pH or pOHs that it's like 0, .0, you can just throw that in as the exponent. Yeah. I'm not sure when you do this last one, Mr. Sam. I think we're probably good. Let's yeah. save their time. Yeah, okay. I think right. we're good. I think we want to talk about one more thing yeah. here. So how do we know what 
pH something is, Mr. Sams? Well, we can do it a couple different ways. We can use something called a pH meter. Yeah, and we'll be using and, that. Yeah, and those are probes that you just put into a solution and it gives you a number. Um, a number and it tells you the pH. Another way is to do this using what's called a pH indicator. Yep. Now, some indicators, like this one says UI, that stands for Universal Indicator. It will tell you a very wide range from 0 up to 12 what the pH is. Some indicators just change one color at a particular pH and we'll yep. also be using some of those. But simply if you had a solution and you didn't know what uh, pH it was, you put a drop or two of universal indicator in it and you compare its mm -hmm. color to the color that you would see here. And so, you know, if it turns green, you're probably around pH 7. If it turns red, you're probably around pH 1. Um, so it's an approximate way to determine what the pH is. Yeah, and um, you'll be doing this in class. This is yep. one of the, the uh, labs slash demos. You might even be doing it at home. There's some cool home stuff that makes this work mm -hmm. too. So um, I think we'll just leave it at that. But the, there's a color way, and then there's a, a, a mechanical uh, way using a pH meter. So there's two ways you can know pH. So that's, that's the end of this podcast. All right. Okay, we'll see you in class, guys.